In this tutorial, we'll be learning something about the grid layout. Now in the upcoming tutorials, we'll be learning about how we could create the layout using the grid layout. So basically a grid layout is nothing but it is a type of layout in which we have a number of rows and number of columns. And we use these rows and columns in order to place the widgets right here. If you're here for the first time, please don't forget to visit my page and subscribe to the channel. You will find that on my channel, there are more than 500 video lectures based on PHP, Mel scripting, Maya, Maya embedded language, uh, 3D graphics from developing HTML, CSS, JavaScript to working on Android, Photoshop, multimedia technology and so on and so forth. So these tutorials will be very helpful and very productive for you. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon and receive notifications regularly. So in this tutorial, what I have done is that I've opened up a new project and I've named it my application 2 or my app 2. And what I have done is that I have deleted each and every element which is present onto the screen so as to make it simple to understand the grid layout. Now, once you are done with setting up your project and deleting all the elements on your layout, the next Next thing which you want to do is that you want to add the grid layout to your interface. So in order to add the grid layout, we simply go under this layouts tab and then select grid layout and we just drag this and drop it over here. So as you could see, we have the grid layout which spans the entire activity or it spans the entire screen of our phone. Now let's say we want to make this grid layout to wrap around the widgets. So for wrapping this layout, we use this button right here. So this thing right here is used to wrap the content of the layout horizontally. So if I click this, it is going to wrap the content horizontally. And this button right here is used in order to wrap content vertically. So when I click it, as you could see that the grid layout is now wrapping the content horizontally and vertically. And as this grid layout has no content, the grid layout is spanning a small piece of area right here. So now let's go ahead and add some widgets to this layout. So the first widget we are going to add to this layout is going to be a button. So we simply select this button. We go inside here. And when we go inside the layout, as you could see that the widget is going to be placed at row zero and column zero. So when I drop it over here, as you could see a new button pops up and now our grid layout is wrapping up the button which we have just added. Now you might also have noticed the green bars right here and here. So these are basically used in order to represent the row and column. So this bar right here is going to represent the set of columns and this bar right here is going to represent a set of rows. Now in this case we are using a combination of row and column which is 0 0. Now let's go ahead and name this button something. So we click on the button and go to properties and inside the property we want to change the text property so let's say we name this button as center so we type center and as you could see the size of our button has changed now let's go ahead and add one more button to this layout so we select the button and let's say we want to place it to the left hand side of the center button so we go ahead here and drop it over here so as you could see we have added the new button and now let's name this button as left as it is placed to the left so we go here and we change the text to left so as you could see we now have two buttons so you could notice that one more green bar has been increased over here and that is because we have added an additional column to our layout now let's add one more button to this and now let's add it to the right hand side of center so as you could see we have our new button and let's name this as right so we change the text here to right so now as you could see we have one row and three columns now let's say we want to add one more widget to the layout so let's say we want to add one more button so we drag the button come over here and just drop it right over here so as you could see that one more button or one more widget has been added and we have noticed the change in the number of rows and also you could use this green bars to entirely shift the rows so for example if i select this and if i drag it and drop it down here you could see that the layout changes so you could basically select an entire row or an entire column and you could just drag it and drop it somewhere else and one more thing which i wanted to mention is that as we are using a grid layout and it is just wrapping up the content so if we select another button and if we drop it somewhere over here so it is not going to laid on the grid layout and that is because our grid layout is only present in this area right here so in order to add a widget to a grid layout make sure that you enter inside the layout area so for example this right here is the layout area which is specified by a yellow border 
so if we drag a button and drop it over here it is not going to be present in our grid layout and also one more thing which i wanted to mention here is that if you want a particular button to span the entire row then you could do so by just dragging the button and dropping it like this now in this case we have increased the span now once this is done the next thing which we do is we select this edge then we drag it up till the point where we want and then we could just drop it over here and you could also do the same with spanning the button to a particular column so that's basically an overview of how a grid layout could be used in order to design the user interface so the grid layout is basically used when we have number of text boxes or buttons onto our interface so that we could align them properly in a particular grid in a row and column fashion so that's it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll be learning how we could handle events such as button clicks and we are also going to learn about the action listener in the upcoming tutorials so thank you very much for watching